Hello there, you beautiful human being, you, and welcome to another startling episode of TechSpert Weekly, the weekly YouTube news show thing that really puts the tech into technically it's a show about consumer technology, but it mostly just seems to be some angry, half drunk, bald talking bad stuff about my mum. So this week, Apple launched some stuff at its annual WWDC event, or WWDC. WWDC. As Apple itself insists on calling it, possibly in a bid to look all cool and down with the kids. Like that time your dad bought a Commodore 64 jumper, even though that 8-bit was sore in 1982. Come on dad, it's all about the Atari ST these days. One mega RAM dude, get with the times. But you know, everyone already knows that Apple is cool as shit. I mean, just look at these guys. Woof. The event itself went on for almost two straight hours, possibly the worst use of two hours since I watched Cats the movie. And for the record, that was before I knew that James Cockboy Corden was in it. And also for the record, I've actually spent a couple of hours of my life trying, mostly unsuccessfully, to extract an ingrown hair from my left testicle with a pair of rusty old tweezers. And yeah, I still count that as a fonder memory than both Cats and Cook and Co's latest extravaganza. Anyway, if you actually care about all those big Apple headlines, well, here's my half-assed three-minute recap of what went down at WWDC, as well as a roundup of the other big tech shenanigans of the week, and of course, a squid at last week's viewer comments. Booze at the ready, let's dive on in. Jingle me. Techspert Weekly. Now, first up, the big iOS 16 feature that everyone's got a boner for is the ability to edit or delete messages after you've sent them. So now I can hastily erase that booty call I sent your mum when I suddenly realise I'm already bucked in with your sister. WatchOS has also been updated with some fitness stuff for, you know, fit people to get all sweaty with. And you've also got new watch faces, including kitties and big dumb dogs to distract you from how utterly miserable and shit everything is. Next up, Apple launched its M2 chipset and the big whoop here is the 50% increase in memory bandwidth and support for more memory versus the M1, which is where the old silicon really sucked ass. even those Pro and Max Billy Big Bollocks versions suffered from bottlenecks. So fingers crossed, here's hoping that the M2 MacBooks don't crash when you get bored during a super dull work Zoom call and decide to slyly stream a bit of nasty hentai action on the side. The first actual M2 machines to launch are a 13-inch Pro and a 13-inch Air. Unfortunately, even the supposedly affordable Air will cost you from 1,649 quid if you want to take advantage of that memory boost. And that's just for the measly 256 gigs of storage. So creators will have to spunk up over two grand to really be in business. Basically, if you want to upgrade, guess it's time to start up that crack smuggling side hustle. Following all of the super hot silicon chat, Apple's many minions then banged on for a bit about macOS Ventura. Unfortunately, I was out of the room for most of this bollocks trying to deal with an internal blockage issue caused by far too much celebratory Jubilee cheese. Then they launched a bit of plastic that attaches your iPhone to your MacBook, which they'll probably charge idiots 100 quid for. Next up was iPadOS 16, and unfortunately I was away once again dealing with yet another blockage, this time my actual toilet following that desperate Jubilee cheese evacuation. And then things got really geeky, and I was already six single molds deep by this point, so I said f*** it and streamed some Stranger Things instead. And that right there is everything you need to know about WWDC 2022. Also this week, Realme launched its latest GT Neo 3 and GT Neo 3T smartphones, which may sound like they're pretty similar, but in actual fact they're about as alike as John Travolta and the Pugot, a headless Filipino demon who can transform into a chicken on demand and whose favourite hobby is apparently stealing women's undercrackers from clotheslines. Oh I sure rookie, it wasn't you that nicked Sonia's bra for the third time this week, it was that bloody pesky Pugot again. Anyways, the Realme GT Neo 3T is the cheapest of the pair at 369 quid, while the Neo 3 will break the bank a bit harder at 599 pounds. Both blowers sport an AMOLED screen, but that's practically where the similarities end. The Neo 3 serves a bonkers fast 150 watt charging tech, although on a slightly smaller battery, while the Dimensity 8100 chipset packs a bigger wallop than the Neo 3T's Snapdragon 870 platform. And they also rock completely different camera tech, hence the wildly varied photo and video results. And if all of that has really tickled your taint, well good news, I've done a full unboxing and comparison of both of these blows right here on Techspert. And this week also saw ZTE launch the Axon 40 Ultra flagship smartphone, which is most notable for its vastly improved under-display camera tech. 
That selfie shooter is properly hidden inside of the slick AMOLED screen for a Borna pop and full view experience. Although admittedly, any actual selfies you take with it don't exactly look stellar, especially when you're shooting in dimmer light. Although I don't know actually, I think maybe my face has improved when it's only formed of about 6 pixels. And last up this week, the Black Shark 5 series has been officially unveiled, offering a slight specs boost over the previous generation, and the same great sack of gaming features that can help even me to get the occasional jammy kill in Call of Duty. And I've got a full saucy hands-on bit of action with all of these smartphones right here on Techspert, you lucky devils you. But anyhow, now it is time for the part of the show that would get that Pugot really excited because it really is a massive pile of pants. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> All right, so first up this week is Will. Hello to Will, who says you can't complain about weeks with little tech news and weeks with multiple launches at the same time. <laughs> uh, that's where you're wrong because I can and I will, Will. Now, what I need is just a nice casual week where there's, you know, a couple of smartphone launches going on, so I'm not desperately scrambling around trying to pull stuff out of my arse to fill the running time of this show. But also, I've got plenty of time to actually get proper pass out drunk. Uh, looks like we've got quite a lot of Xiaomi 12 Ultra feedback, and quite a lot of it is uh, about the luck of the thing. Uh, so, for instance, Ragnar says, OK, well, seriously, when I glanced at your thumbnail, I thought you were reviewing a Xiaomi branded heating utensil for your kitchen. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, fair enough, that arse end does somewhat resemble a kind of a, a hob arrangement. Uh, but you, know, you never know, in real life it might look a lot better than it does in those, you know, glamorous renders and everything. That sometimes happens, right? Uh, Tetzet is also taking the household appliance approach, but in a way harsher fashion. He says, the ultra design reminds me of my old toilet. I mean, it could have been, you know, a really attractive toilet. You know, we don't know without more context here. You know, it could have been one of those proper Swiss Japanese style efforts that sings you a merry little song as it gives you a cold water enema. Gotta say, I did always fancy myself one of those uh, fancy robot Japanese toilets, although I'm not really sure then what would happen in a, you know, Skynet style Terminator robot uprising type thing, all the inventive ways one of those things could kill you. And though who knows, maybe in a robot uprising the toilets would be on our side. Uh, next up, Donald says, Great show, mate. Watching it on my shiny new Xiaomi 12. Your review was spot on. It is f***ing class. Yeah, I uh, 100% agree, obviously, because uh, you've seen my review. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying it, mate. Glad uh, it was a good recommendation. I do recommend it a lot because I think if you want something a bit more compact that's still proper f***ing top flagship, it's basically what the S22 should have been. I mean, basically, if you combined the Xiaomi 12 with then Samsung's, you know, guarantees of security and OS updates and everything, you'd have an almost perfect device. Uh, Gareth says, tedious comment alert, but the Xiaomi 12 Ultra could double up as a banjo or something equally fancy. Now, that would be pretty freaking cool. But if the security updates die off after two years, it's just a huge expense. Not a tedious comment at all, to be fair. It's a perfectly uh, valid, a very important point, actually. The likes of Xiaomi and Realme and Poco, they all still seem to be struggling a bit when it comes to the OS and the security updates. Pretty much all the Chinese manufacturers, in fact, apart from OnePlus, who are def definitely making a bit more of a concerted effort in the area. Uh, but yeah, they're all lagging behind when it comes to those updates compared with rivals like Samsung. And it is a shame it does impact the value of the smartphone when you're then out of this update cycle after just a year or two. Another bit that really annoys me is when you've got a smartphone coming along, you know, six months after Android 12 was officially launched and it's still got old Android 11 on it as well. It's just like, oh no, makes Uncle Spurt a very sad man indeed. Uh, next up, Krieger says, Portland, Jamaica, in the building. God damn, man. I'm like, seriously, how many, how many shout outs from Jamaica do I get on this thing? I'm, I'm starting to think I need to take this show on the road, you know, do a Jamaican Textbook Weekly special, recording live on the beach, surrounded by empty bottles of rum. I can't say that I'll actually be conscious for the show, but you know, I'll certainly be enjoying myself. Uh, next up, the Dark Ranger says, let's go mule mucker, greets for Glasgow. You know, I'll, I'll probably have to do a Glasgow special at Expert Weekly sometime as well, get back north of the border. Probably won't bother packing my sunglasses and budgie smugglers for that one. But a hi, hello to any of my uh, Scottish chums who are watching right now. Hopefully you're suitably soused. And commiserations on, obviously, the uh, the defeat to the Ukraine uh, the other week. The other week? Was it another? I can't even remember time anymore. 
Yeah, bloody hell, that was a really good match. And uh, like, I didn't even know who to support it. it got, to, got to admit, normally I would go with Scotland, but you know, Ukraine, come on, man. You know, you got to feel for those guys. They need some kind of win in 2022. Anyhow, next up, Dermot says, you've got lovely tan lines around your eyes. You're like an albino panda. Uh, yeah, thanks buddy. Uh, I think it's probably safe to say that any semblance of a tan I may have somehow accidentally picked up after two weeks in the States have been constantly shit on with fierce UV rays. Probably all gone now. And full on reverted to my natural complexion of albino polar bear. Next up, some Sony reminiscence from Ben who says, I remember when I had the Xperia U, which was one of my favourite looking Android devices. Yeah, the phone was an absolute bug fest and so slow that I couldn't actually answer calls on it, but it did look cool. God, yeah, I, I remember the Xperia U very well indeed. I think that might have even been like one of the very first smartphones I reviewed for Mobile Choice magazine when I joined that after leaving Future. Well, back in the day, it was like 2012-ish time, wasn't it? Yeah, I just remember the pointless little pop-out bit at the bottom that you could rip off and swap with the one of a slightly different colour and I had like the light-up band going around it. I'll try and remember to post a picture up here if I'm not completely wasted when I'm editing this. And that bottom bit wasn't even where the SIM card and the memory card went. It was completely pointless, but it was rather bloody fun. Ah, classic Xperia. I would love to do actually some sort of like video history of the Xperia smartphone and its evolution from what it was to, to what it is now. But then that would involve buying a lot of Xperia smartphones and that is valuable booze money, kiddies. So that ain't gonna happen. Next up, George says, the first episode of the show that I've watched in my new apartment. Hey, congratulations on the new digs. Now what you need to do is throw a massive housewarming party and invite all of us round for it as well. Maybe get in about 10,000 bottles of Johnny Walker. I should about cover it. Uh, Bry says, speaking of HTC, my first Android phone was an HTC sensation. Strong choice, sir. And uh, Christ, this <laughs> show's turned into a proper nostalgia fest now, isn't it? Well, while we're chatting HTC and first smartphones, my first smartphone I remember was the HTC Magic uh, back in 2008, 2009. Uh, it was the one that had the pointless little trackball on that enormous frickin' lip, even though I had a touchscreen. I don't think I used that trackball once, to be honest. Although, to be fair, some of those touchscreens back in the day, they were a bit balls. And trying to actually type out a message on the tiny little virtual keyboard on those things, that was a lot of fun. But anyway, I'm starting to sound like a proper old prick now, so let's move on swiftly. Uh, Jacob says, Jacob Reese Mogg is my spirit animal. Glad that you mentioned him and his top hat. I mean, yeah, again, going from a nostalgic point of view, he's definitely rocking the uh, the classic old school headwear there on his shiny plastic head. Adam says, what would be a worthy upgrade from what I have now? I've got the S20 5G. I want better battery life, ideally, and for it to be decent for gaming. Ah, uh, I was really, really hoping we'd make it to the end of this show, at least, without anyone asking for any tech advice so I don't look like a complete f***ing clueless dimwit. And you've completely... Buggered that up, Adam. Thanks a lot, mate. Okay, so good battery life, good gaming chops. Well, the one that immediately springs to mind, something I've reviewed recently, is the Poco F4 GT, which is kind of a medium-ish, mid-range smartphone uh, with an emphasis on the gaming. You've got some dedicated gaming features like the shoulder triggers in there, great performance. Battery life is pretty solid as well. And I believe that's got 120 watt fast charging if you do need to top it up at all. I also really like the Realme GT Neo 3, which I banged on about at the start of the show. I did a full unboxing and everything of that this week as well. Again, good gaming chops. You've got proper gaming features uh, chucked in there as well. Uh, and strong battery life as well. Yeah, the Realme smartphones tend to have uh, good long battery life. Otherwise, if you are dead set on the game and then there's lots of other dedicated gaming smartphones out there, including the Black Shark, of course, the Red Magics tend to be quite good value as well. So yeah, go figure it out. Uh, next up, SOS says, I only understand 60% of your ramblings and still keep on watching these reviews for some reason. To be honest, I'd say if you understand 60%, then that's probably better than most, you know, that's more than half. So I would definitely count that as a victory. And anyway, oh bugger, look at the time, children. Unfortunately, it's time for Uncle Spurt to bugger right off and uh, get this video edited and also get absolutely stone cold stinking drunk. And I don't really know which order I'm going to do these two activities in. I'm probably, to be perfectly honest, going to be smushing them together and doing a good bit of multitasking. But a massive thank you, as always, to everyone who commented on last week's show. Absolutely uh, rib tickling going through all of those, that's for sure. Please do smash your comments down below. We'll try and get through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week... This is about next week. Let's check out the old calendar, see what is going on. Um, Pilates? No, hang on, I'm in the wrong f***ing calendar, aren't I?
Okay, well, I haven't got any uh, smartphone announcements or anything logged in the old calendar next week, so it looks like it might be a fairly quiet one. So Christ knows what I'm going to do for Techspert Weekly next week, but I'm sure it'll be a heap of bollocks as always. I do have some best of roundups that I'm working on right now, though the best smartphones of 2022 so far, the best camera phones, shenanigans like that that really need to get updated. I'm currently reviewing the Honor Watch GS3, which I'm liking very much, definitely solid value for money, so stay tuned for the full review of that next week as well. And maybe one or two little surprises as well, you never know. I might do a video completely sober. <laughs> no, that would, that would just be ridiculous. So anyway, have yourselves a bloody lovely uh, weekend, people. Thank you very much for joining me right here as always. Please do plug, subscribe, do that notifications bell, blah, 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 and have yourselves a great week. I've, again, I've done, I've done it again. I do this every bloody week. Well, have, have a doubly great weekend because I love you.